In today's video, I'm going to quickly recap what's happened in the Australian budget, and from there, we're going to be looking at what Trump said in the overnight session. Hello and welcome to another ACY Securities Hot Topics video. My name is Alastair Schultz and I'm going to be a host through today's trading journey. To get things kicked off, I wanted to give you all a bit of an update on what is happening around the globe with coronavirus. Right now we have 35.6 million cases globally. In addition to that, we've had nearly 1 million deaths, a little bit over in fact. Now of course, these numbers here don't cover how many have actually recovered, which is estimated to be well over the 20 million mark at this point in time. Now moving on, the first thing that I'm covering today is what we've heard from Trump. Any idea of a stimulus before an election has basically been thrown out the window. He has turned around and said that he has announced or he has told and instructed his staff to cease communications and cease negotiations with the Democrats on their most recent bill that they tried to get passed there last week. He is now saying that they will be one after if he is re-elected and he is being very confident about being re-elected. So perhaps we will have to wait and see if we do get one this fourth quarter. And that's going to be another problem. If he does get re-elected, then now it becomes a negotiation again and they're starting back from square one. So we were meant to be seeing this back at the beginning of September. We are now obviously well into October and likely not going to be seeing one perhaps before the end of the year. Let's keep that in mind for the future because whenever we do get stimulus, we get a boost in equity markets as well. And of course, the US dollar gets a little bit of a decline. So definitely things there that impact all of our charts at the moment. Now moving on, the budget has been announced for Australia last night, 7.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. A lot of the stuff that I covered in yesterday's video was relevant to the budget. We sort of had a bit of an idea that there would be a lot of different things that were covered. Today, people have not been happy about it. They've seen what the actual figures are, and I, for one, also have to look at it and say, well, the numbers that we were expecting are a little bit under. They're talking about $213 billion Australian for the whole valuation of it so far. But in reality, there probably needs to be more. And in my mind, I think that we're going to be seeing more fiscal policies to come over the next sort of three years or four years, which is the timeline that the budget is offering. So there are a couple of issues with this. One, it's lacking foresight on where we're going to go after 2024. It really just runs up until 2024. What happens then? We fall off a cliff? I'm not entirely sure. Then the second part that's an issue with it is, is there enough money or scope even to reach 2024? At this point in time, the government side of things or the fiscal side has been really relying on monetary policy to sort of help pull us out of recession in Australia. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case forever. And we are going to have to look at alternative measures for stimulus. Regardless of how we look at this now or paint the picture, monetary policy has been supporting the economy. Adding to that, we've now got less ammunition than what we had at the beginning of the pandemic occurring. Right now, we're at 0.25 basis points. We can drop it down to 0.1. What happens after that? We've, the central bank has already said they're not interested in going right down into a negative interest rate. And the other measures that are available to them are going to start getting restricted and limited once you get closer to that 0.1%. Now, in addition to all of that, we have to really guess on where some of this money is going to be going. We know all the sectors, we know all the places. There's going to be a lot of support for property and housing, first homeowners. We know there's going to be some level of support on the tax side of things because we're going to have taxation cuts, which might increase consumer spending. We're also seeing some money going towards defense projects. But some of the other ones that probably need a little bit of help, those gig workers, the ones that are in entertainment and hospitality, and of course, a lot of the other industries and older generation workers, anyone above that sort of age, age 35 and above age bracket, where the incentives are now not there. One of the biggest gripes that people are having about this budget so far actually is to do with how some of the new jobs are going to be developed. So far, there are incentives to hire someone under the age of 35 and for every 20 hours an individual gets, you will get $200 towards the business. That means that you would very likely find that a number of entities would go, well, it might be cheaper for us to actually hire two people, give them 20 hours as a split shift, and then fire the full-time employee. That doesn't equate to a fuller economy and more jobs. It just means that there are more people working less hours. So definitely to some things to really consider on that budget at the moment. And I will be looking forward to seeing if there are any more updates on that as we go along from the Treasury. Now, moving on from that, we do have a little bit of stuff to cover today on central bank autonomy. 
A report came out just recently as of the overnight session that by the ECB that at least 13 central banks around the globe have diminished autonomy. Now, why is that actually important? Central banks are actually meant to be separated from government. If they're not separated from that government and having that independence, then you tend to find that political issues will affect monetary policy and how it affects the overall economy. They should be two separate things, very much like religion and politics or anything else that goes along with it. Now, in this instance, when we do deal with central banks and having that independence from them, it acts as a bit of a shield. It stops them from being influenced by political place. And the most common or most frequently found cause of diminishing value or diminished independence on central banks has been about criticism from political leaders against the leaders of central banks. Perfect example, Fed Powell and Donald Trump, where we're seeing constant attacks from Donald Trump trying to get the central bank to move or bend to his will. So that is a problem. Another example that we've seen is where we're in Turkey, where we have seen basically the central bank removed and it's now become a political part. So we do have to keep in mind these sort of things and it isn't a good sign when we start seeing that breakdown because it means that certain parts of the economy aren't functioning as they should be. Now moving on, really there's not a great deal of news today but we do still have a bank holiday today. We also have French trade balance from there, 10 year bond auctions for the UK and Germany and of course we have some news coming out from ECB Lagarde much later tonight. And then in the evening session for the US, it's actually going to be tomorrow morning 5 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, we have FOMC minutes from September. So I'm not expecting to see much change in there. We hear pretty regularly from Fed Powell, and we've, as, we've, as recently as this week, we've heard that there's more stimulus needed on his side. Now, in today's session, before we go into the London session for tonight, we've seen the ASX prop itself back up after getting that sort of abysmal hit that we've seen from US stimulus based news. Of course, the Aussie is down as well because of that US stimulus. So we are waiting to see what we get tonight in the US session and how markets respond. Generally, we have seen some markets either mi fairly mixed today. So be wary, have a look at your charts before entering for trades tonight and you'll be all right. Now, if there's anything from today's video or perhaps some of my other videos you would like to get in contact with me about, please feel free to reach out via any of my social media channels. Of course, email is probably the best at talktoal at acy.com. Now, if you wouldn't mind, like and subscribe to this video so you can get more great content from me and ACY Securities in the future. Have a great trading day ahead.